Today we're going to talk about the laws of exponents. Laws of exponents have a lot to do with patterns in math. So first let's look at these threes raised to different powers. The big number is called the base. The small, small number is the exponent or the power. Three to the first power, that's just three. Three to the second power, that means three times three. So that's nine. Three to the third power means three times three times three, which is 27. Three to the fourth power, we're multiplying three by itself four times. So we know that's 27 times three is 81. Three to the fifth power, I knew that was 81 times three is 243. Let's look at the pattern here. Following these numbers down the line, each one gets multiplied by 3 to create the next one. So if I move backwards, I divide by 3. 81 divided by 3 is 27. Divided by 3 is 9. Divided by 3 is 3. So if I want to continue this pattern to find 3 to the 0 pattern, I need to continue this pattern by dividing by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. That's the first exponent law that we need to remember. Anything raised to the power of zero equals one. Let's continue this pattern even further with negative exponents. Again, if this pattern continues, then this pattern must continue. So here we're dividing by three every time. So to continue moving up the pattern, we still need to divide by three. Therefore, 3 to the negative first power is 1 divided by 3, or 1 third. 3 to the negative second power, we divide this by 3, giving us 1 to the ninth. 3 to the negative third power, continuing the pattern, divide by 3 to get 1 over 27. Once you know the pattern, you can easily work with negative exponents. It creates a fraction and moves the whole thing to the denominator, but it keeps the same exponent, just makes it positive. Nothing about a negative exponent will turn your actual answer into a negative number. It just makes it smaller. Okay, let's look at some other exponent rules. What if we have x cubed times x to the fifth? Let's expand this to see what happens x cubed means x times x times x. x to the fifth now we can see how many x's are multiplying themselves. We have 8 total so this equals x to the 8th. Once you see this pattern you can use a shortcut here and just add these exponents. Let's look at when we're dividing with exponents. Again, let's expand it to see what happens. Now since we're dividing, we can do some canceling here because everything is multiplying. We can cancel anything that's in the numerator and in the denominator. That leaves us with x squared. So you can see a shortcut here when you're dividing with the same base and you have exponents, you can keep the base and subtract the exponents. Let's look at when we have an exponent raised to another exponent, a power raised to a power. This means we have x cubed multiplying five times. Let's expand that again. Each of these is three x's. So now we can see how many x's are multiplying there. We have 15, so that's x to the 15th power. Notice the shortcut here. If you have a power raised to a power, you can multiply those two powers. Keep the base, 3 times 5 is 15. Here are the different rules you need to know when dealing with exponents. These are good to know to help you work quickly, but if you forget one, then just expand the expression 
and you can usually figure it out. Let's try simplifying some expressions that combine several rules. Here we have power rules, so we'll need to multiply 8 times 2. Now we just have product rule, so we'll add 16 and 3. Watch out for when you have parentheses and more than one item inside. That means everything gets squared. This means 5x times 5x, so that equals 25x squared. That's different than if you have 5x squared. In this case, only the x is squared, not the 5. So these are two different expressions. Let's look at this expression. First of all, remember that exponent rules only apply if the bases match. We can't combine a's with b's, but we can simplify the a's and the b's. This is a fraction, so that means we're dividing, so we're going to use quotient rule. We have 5, and we need to subtract negative 3. Let's go ahead and simplify this part. 5 minus a negative 3 means we're adding, so that's a to the 8th. Then let's look at what's going on with b. We have a 4, and we need to subtract 3. That's b to the 1st. You don't have to write a 1, we just know that that's b to the first. Let's look at this one. It looks really complicated, but we can clean it up with laws of exponents. First, remember that this squared outside the parentheses applies to both the 3 and the n. So that means 3n times 3n. So first we have a 9n squared. Then let's bring everything else over. Okay, we only have one coefficient. Let's go ahead and bring that down, the 9. Just looking in the numerator here, we have three different n's with different exponents. So we can use product rule. We're going to add these exponents together. 2 plus 7.5 is 9.5, minus 2.5 is 7. We subtracted there because that's a negative but technically we're still adding these exponents together. All right, now we're ready to use quotient rule for the n to the seventh over n to the third. The coefficient is still there. Here we have seven minus three, giving us n to the fourth. 